Good morning everyone. I haven't vlogged in a while and thought I'd give you guys an update <coughs> Excuse me <coughs> on our pregnancy. Uh, I think the last time that I posted a vlog was about our baby moon trip and um, my throat was a little bit sore um, and I kind of lost my voice but I am getting it back um, but I think some of the people that saw me and I was talking really low, they're like, oh, your voice is changing because some people experience that during pregnancy and I'm like, nope, no voice changes. I was just a little bit under the weather. Praise God, I am much better. So uh, today I'm actually going to the doctor's office. Today is my week 32. Um, well, technically will be 32 Wednesday or I still consider it as a guesstimate because I really don't believe in due dates um, because they're still guesstimates. Um, and I think it's easier for any pregnant woman um, not to go by that date because it's not 100% accurate. And um, a lot of times it can bring you anxiety um, as well as your family. And then you'll have a bunch of people asking you when, 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 when. Um, so I find it much easier just to tell people that it's the baby's due in November <clears throat> And then whenever she decides to come in November Whether it's a little bit earlier whether it's a little bit later than predicted um, We'll be happy with that just as long as she is fully cooked. That's all that we um, That's all we are concerned about and want to make sure that she is healthy so um, so I'm going to my appointment today, um, just a regular checkup, of course. Um, I'm still in my every two week appointments, um, and I think I switched to one week appointments probably in two weeks, two or three weeks possibly, so we'll see. But um, every appointment, just a regular, you know, temperature ch check, um, the blood pressure check, um, the nurse or the midwife comes and talks to you or the doctor or whoever you're seeing. I'm seeing a midwife so I do have some questions that I came up with especially since I've been reading that book that I was talking to you guys about um, and I'll definitely share more of that once I do finish and once we kind of go through the process I do want to make sure that um, I feel like I want to see how effective that book was even though every book is dependent on the reader uh, depending on the information that is given depending on how you take it in uh, so you know you can't say well the book didn't help me because my story was so different but I just wanted to see if the techniques that they shared in this book um, and how you know effective they are to prepare you for your labor so definitely looking forward to that um, and really this book has prepared me to not be like nervous about it so um, I'm feeling good but this weekend and last weekend has been pretty crazy because um, we've been coming home late every weekend last weekend we had an event to attend and we weren't home we didn't get home until six o'clock in the morning and so of course then it's like recuperating um, and then this week we also had an event in Greenville as well or Greer um, and we didn't get home until like three o'clock and then had to get up early in the morning um, to help out at one of the churches of course that we attend or our church that we attend but and of course today is Monday so back at it back to work and Ryan is working on the event um, for the work uh, for the job that he's working at so it's just a lot of preparations a lot of work to do and of course Mondays are my usual um, errand runs or appointments so hoping that I will be able to finish everything and come home and make some dinner I'm thinking I'll probably make some 
kaklietki, which is basically like meat patties mixed with vegetables. So I might record that, might not, um, because it is kind of a messy thing unless you have a glove to work with. You have to mix your meat with your hand. A lot of do it. A lot of people do it like with their spoon, but I feel like you really get it done well with um, your hands. But stay tuned. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. So it's dinner time at the Cole House, and. Um, Ryan is going to be home shortly. So today I am making, <clears throat> they're called kaklietki, uh, which is basically like meat patties with some vegetables. Some people fry them, some people bake them, but there's so many different ways of making these. Uh, but it's very, very simple. Um, there are a few steps. Uh, usually I make a larger portion when I make these because you can store them in the fridge, reheat them. Uh, and they taste pretty good. Some people even freeze them. But I am using um, organic grass-fed um, uh, beef. And this one, as you can see, I got this one on sale. Usually they're about like $8 a package. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and open this one up. And usually I don't do a lot of meat. Um, I usually buy fish which most of the time it is um, salmon and of course wild caught salmon but um, since I've been pregnant uh, I read that uh, beef or red meat can actually be really good for you um, just because the baby gets different kind of nutrients so I put that in the bowl and then I also mix in this is the same brand organic um, ground turkey so i mix these two meats together some people mix in pork into making these cacliete and that's fine i'm not a big meat person i mean honestly i could be like a pescatarian honestly because i could probably just stick with fish vegetables and carbs like i don't really care for meat but from time to time it's good so i made sure that it um, the meat thawed, and you can thaw it in your fridge. Um, I had it out since this morning before I went to the appointment. Um, just as long as you, you know, cook the meat the same day. Because if you keep it out too long in the room temperature, then you might start having some bacteria grow in it. So what I do is I'll, I'll just mix it together really, really well. And then, of course, I add my herbs and seasonings and whatever else you want to add to it. You can be as creative as you want for this one. Ground pepper. So, I'm adding ground pepper. I'm not very much of a recipe person. Like, I kind of do everything by the eye, depending on the portion that I make. So, um... You can say it's like a half a teaspoon of ground pepper. If you want it a little bit spicier, you can. Using Mrs. Dash, this is like the, I don't know if it focuses. I, it doesn't want to focus. There. <laughs> but this is a salt-free Italian medley seasoning. This is Mrs. Dash. And I use that one generously as well. You can say half a teaspoon and then of course about a a uh, teaspoon of your salt and then I go ahead and mix that together really well my mom used to always mix this with her hands if you have gloves you can use that um, just because some of the pieces of the meat might still be frozen so you want to make sure that you don't have like certain patties have more of ground beef uh, versus turkey. You just wanted to make sure that it's mixed in really, really well. So some people bake these. Um, you can bake them, that way you're not standing over them, especially if you're like, 
uh, a breastfeeding mom or uh, you have other things to take care of that day, the only thing that I would suggest with baking is that you cover them with a tin foil, number one, and then with uh, baking them, I would bake them on one side for about maybe 12 to 15 minutes depending on your oven, and then I would take them out, add some more oil, um, and then flip them over. Because the thing with these patties, you want to make sure that they're crispy on both sides, and that's why a lot of people, you know, fry them, because they're really good um, and crispy on both sides. Then here, I already have this prepared. Uh, this is three carrots shredded, and then um, of course, uh, finely chopped red onion. I usually like to use red onion, some people like to use white onion, um, but you saute them uh, until they're like golden brown. I let them cool down so it's not hot when you add them to the meat. And then of course, mix it in together. And this was about, hmm, it wasn't a full onion, it was a large size onion, but it was like three-fourths. So you can say like three-fourths of a large onion or um, a medium size onion. Um, onion really kind of gives you a good taste to it. So it's good to mix in your vegetables and have, you know, a balanced amount. And then I'm also going to mince some garlic. And I already peeled these. Um, had to buy myself a new garlic mincer because mine broke. I bought one, uh, or a friend of mine bought it for me and my sister a long time ago uh, from Ikea. And uh, it just broke. It wasn't doing its job. But <clears throat> this one is... Ooh, I'm recording the wrong side of my body. But it has this little detachment piece here I forgot what brand it is but it's kind of convenient um, so I'm gonna go ahead and mince this garlic you can roast the garlic if you want to a little bit on the pan so it's softened up I'm just gonna go ahead and mince it all right so my garlic is minced I'm also going to add in one egg so you can kind of get creative with these um, everybody's if you go to like our culture, um, everybody's cacliate tastes so different because they have such a different family recipe. Um, I kind of like to change it up. So if I see somebody else putting something else in there, I'm like, that's a kind of a good idea. Um, I mean, the more vegetables you add to it, you know, the healthier it is for your family to be able to make sure that they get their nutrients and good vegetables or um, like garlic, you don't eat that very often. So to add it in foods like this is definitely a good idea. Actually, I'm not going to use my hands because it looks like it mixed it, but I'm still going to have to use my hands to create the patties and I'll show you how to do them. So this is what it looks like right over here. Just a really nicely mixed um, mixture so I know a lot of you I've been posting a lot of these little things that I've you know that I do throughout the day um, as far as dinner and lunch some of my dishes from my culture um, and I really didn't have time to you know either put up the recipe or something and that's my mashed potatoes so I think this is a good way for me to share with you guys some of the recipes um, that I know and that I usually do on a regular basis. That way you can watch them as I make them. <clears throat> and so I just grab, some people also use like the flour to uh, dip both sides of the, uh, both sides of these patties so they'll be a little bit more crispier when you put them on the pan. Uh, you can, you don't have to. I just like to put them inside. That way they kind of stick together a little bit more, but you want to make them like this round. So you just put like a tablespoon of meat 
and then just put them on your board and continue making some. So I'm going to turn my stove on, the same pan that I used to saute the onions and the carrots right here, using my Organics um, Extra Virgin Olive Oil. Um, with this one, you do want to be kind of more generous. Um, I don't like them to float in it, but um, <clears throat> technically they do have to float in it, in the oil. So I, I am a little bit more generous, but not too excessive. So if you are going to bake them, put some olive oil on the pan and then um, bake one side for 12 minutes, take them out, flip them, add some more oil and put them back in the oven. So, oh, forgot to show you guys my patties. So if you have a big board, you can just like layer all of them on the board. That way, all you have to do is just fry them. Um, but I do have some left in the bowl. You can actually, if, if you don't want to make the rest of the uh, meat, you can actually put it in a Ziploc bag, seal it, and then, um, you know, leave it for next time. The only thing is, it's a big chunk of meat, so it might take a while for it to thaw. So I would definitely suggest making these patties, putting them in the freezer on the same board, letting them freeze, and then just throw them in a Ziploc bag. That way you don't have to, next time you don't have to wait for the meat to thaw, to mix it again, you know. It's just a hassle, so. <clears throat> you want to make sure that they fry, but on the low setting, so that you're not only like burning the sides and they don't cook through, because it is meat. You want to make sure that it cooks through um, and that you don't have raw patties. So, so they're simmer simmering right now on one side. I'd say about give it um, five to eight minutes on low. You know, you turn up the pan, but then you turn it on low, making sure that they don't burn and then they're actually cooking through the whole way so that you're not serving raw meat. Meanwhile, I'm gonna go ahead and tend to my mashed potatoes. So this is the second batch. Um, I scraped the pan after the first batch um, just because sometimes it left, like, leaves like residue on the pan and then when you flip them over, they could look almost burnt but it's because of the residue from uh, them cooking. So you wanna make sure that you do scrape it pretty often. Um, so these are the finished ones. I'm gonna go ahead and put them in a container. Uh, a lot of people, because it's fried and it's in the oil, they like to put some paper towels on the plate and then layer them on top of the paper towel. So some of the um, oil drains a little bit, but that's pretty much it. Um, of course, this is a kind of a smaller batch. Um, you know, I would usually eat myself like three patties. I'll give Ryan like four or five. So this is definitely like, I'd say two portions for a small family. Um, or if you have like a family of four, you'll probably eat it all in one night. So I just remember that um, when I, you know, I was at home and we would make these at home uh, with mom. It would be such a huge batch and it would just take half a day to make them uh, because of all the meat that you use, the mixture that you would create, and then standing over them and frying them was just grueling. So I was never a big fan of, um, of them whenever um, I got married. So um, until I kind of figured, I'm like, well, I don't need to make such a large portion. You know, I'm married, I only, it's only me and Ryan. So unless I have guests coming over, so. They're not that bad whenever you do have a smaller family, but when it kind of expands into a larger family, it can be pretty difficult. So it's gonna be a tasty dinner and hope you guys uh, can try them too at home and see how you like them, how you like the recipe. And if you do try them, make sure that you comment below. Uh, let me know if you have any other questions. I'd love to answer them um, or hear from you guys. Um, and I will see you guys next time on my vlogging channel, uh, so be on the lookout. Bye.